Okay, this episode we're going to be covering the pen tool, the hand tool, and the zoom tool. First of all, the pen tool. The shortcut to select the pen tool is P. And while you're over here in the timeline, it's going to bring up this little pen looking tool here. And what this does, the pen tool is basically a keyframe editor. We'll get into some keyframe editing later on, but I'm going to show you a couple things here. First of all, I'm going to hit shift plus and it will change my track height to a standard track height. As I take this pen tool down, you'll notice I can click on this line right here. This is an opacity line. Let me just choose my arrow tool and show you. As I grab my opacity line right here, this is not showing for some reason. You go up to the toolbar here and tell it to show video keyframes. I believe it usually has this on by default, but if it doesn't, tell it to show video keyframes or audio keyframes. The pen tool on the video here, first of all, if you use your just your regular arrow tool, you can grab this opacity and it turns down the opacity. It makes this transparent. And there's nothing underneath it, so it looks like it's making it darker. Let me just grab a video clip, put it on top. And now this clip that's on top, as I turn down the opacity, it will turn see-through and you'll see the clip below it. So now the pen tool will basically be used to animate keyframes on the opacity on the video clips. I hit the P for the pen tool and you move it down here to the opacity. Notice it has this little plus button right there. And if you add, if you click right there, it's going to add a keyframe and add another keyframe. Say you want it to start at zero opacity right there. You just drag that down and it will turn from zero opacity to 100 op opacity over time by creating those keyframes. So now that's basically a fade in. So now as we play, it fades in. It goes from, there's easier ways to do fade in than this, but that is basically what these keyframes do with the pen tool. I'm going to undo that. Now with the audio, if you use it on the audio, this is basically a volume control. To get in your arrow tool, your selection tool, you can grab the audio level and turn it down. That's all the way down, so now there is no audio playing. If you grab this and turn it up, that boosts it and cranks it up. And now it's loud. What the pen tool does, is it creates keyframes for turning up and down audio. And we will have a section on audio mixing later on. Uh, but right now I did key three keyframes. I'm going to grab this and pull this one down. It'll basically be at zero volume and then we'll gradually turn up from here to here. So now as I play, it gradually turns up. So I'm going to undo that. So that's what the pen tool is used for. It's basically a keyframer within your timeline. It can also be used on effects and some other things as well, which we'll go through in a future episode. The hand tool which shortcut is H for hand. You hit H for your hand tool. Basically what the hand tool does is it is, it's kind of like a grabber to move your timeline around and visualize different parts, parts of your timeline. If I want to see further down here, I can hit my H for my hand tool, grab this, and move it to the right. And then I can see further down my timeline. That's really all that does in the timeline there is just navigates through your timeline and views different portions of your timeline. You can kind of get around this by hitting, let's do my selection tool, V, minus, plus, and also this, this helps with the zoom tool. If you want to view a certain part of your timeline, you can hit the slash above the return key. It shows your entire timeline, and you can grab your mouse and move it to a different portion. If you're zoomed up, you can use your hand tool to see different portions of your timeline. Also, this works in your uh, program monitor up here. If you select your program monitor and you're zoomed up on this image here, let's, let's zoom up to 200% on this image here. You can use your hand tool to see a different portion of your screen here. So if you need to see the eyes, if you're doing some effects here in Premiere, you can grab this and move it to a different portion of the image using your hand tool. I'm going to pull that back to fit. And the zoom tool. The zoom tool, I pretty much never use this, and it's because I just use shortcuts. You can select the zoom tool, and you can go to a different portion of, of the timeline here and click and zoom. The more you click, the more it zooms up until it kind of maxes out and can't zoom anymore. If you want to zoom out, all you have to do is hold down the Option key while the Zoom tool is selected and click, and it will zoom out. I keep clicking here. Let's hit Z for zoom. Oh, I'm on the Zoom tool. Click and zoom. Hold down Option, zoom out. And the reason why I never use this is because I use on the top of my keyboard, not on the numpad, but the top of my keyboard, the minus and plus. Plus zooms in minus zooms out. You don't need to use your zoom tool for this. And then if you want to see your entire timeline, hit the slash above the return key and it shows your entire timeline. And that's really it for this entire toolbar. Those are kind of the basic functions of all these tools which will help you edit down here in the timeline. Next episode we'll be going covering the trim window and going over some more efficient ways to perform editing now that you understand roll, ripple, slip, and slide.